Hello, good morning, and welcome for joining us as we're into our uh, series called Worth It. I just want to say Happy Easter to everybody. Um, last Wednesday, I started a series on Worth It, and uh, we talked about our uh, suffering and our pain and our difficulties that we go through. Um, and, you know, we were talking about how it was easier to talk to somebody who could relate and understand what we're going through. And, um, you know, what better person than Jesus Christ? I mean, he understands everything that we could possibly be go, that we could possibly go through and what we could be going through right now. You know, um, I talked a little bit about Good Friday and that it's a reminder that Jesus, um, you know, he also understands because of the hurting that he went through. And Jesus has experienced everything you and I have experienced, except for one thing. Is that the difference between us and Jesus is that Jesus is perfect. He never messed up. He never hurt anybody. He never made bad decisions. But see, you and I, we do it all the time. It's amazing that Jesus can comfort and care for us even when we cause our own suffering through our mistakes that we do, that we choose and we bring upon ourselves by our own decisions. You see, sometimes we need more than just God's comfort. We also need God's help. Um, Good Friday might show us that Jesus can comfort and understand us when, you know, when we're going through hardships or when we're hurting. But you know what? Fortunately for us, you know, Good Friday isn't the end of the story. In fact, Jesus, his story didn't end with hopelessness. No. And our story doesn't have to end that way either. After Good Friday, which was the day that we remember Jesus' suffering on the cross and all that he went through, comes Easter today, Easter Sunday. And it's a day that we remember Jesus' victory. I'm going to read a book in, uh, in Luke uh, chapter 23. I'm going to read verses 44 through chapter 24, verse 8. Um, it was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain was torn apart of the temple. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last breath. The centurions, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance. Watching these things, now there was a man named Joseph a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from Judean, the town of Arimathea, and he, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut inside a rock, one of which no one had ever yet been laid in. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath day in obedience to the commandments. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes 
that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. He said, The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. So is Jesus the suffering on Good Friday? Was it worth it? He would tell you, yes, it was worth it. You and I were worth the pain. Because his pain led to his resurrection. And this was the moment in history that changed everything. And so, yes, it is worth it. But you see, this story of Jesus' resurrection almost sounds too good to be true. How do we know Jesus' miraculous resurrection from the dead is any more real than the Easter Bunny? What if his resurrection of Jesus never really happened? And if it never happened, does our faith mean anything? Is there any real power in the gospel we believe? Or is this story just there to, I don't know, make us feel good? Is Jesus, if he stayed dead, is following him or his teaching really worth it? We're not the first people to come up or even think or ask these questions. See, decades after the resurrection, there were some Jesus followers in a city called Corinthian who weren't so sure of the resurrection. And that it had really even happened. But the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to these believers to help them understand that the resurrection really had indeed happened. And that it changed everything. See, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to scripture. It is God's word. See, Paul isn't sugarcoating it here. If the resurrection never happened, Paul says we believed in Jesus in vain. Verses 12 through 17, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised... Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. And again, Paul says, in, if the resurrection never happened, then our faith is meaningless. I mean, that, that's pretty big words. Um, 
Here's why that is so important. If Jesus never rose from the dead, there is no power that can free us from our sins. You see, Jesus didn't just suffer so he could comfort us when our sin leads to suffering. You see, he suffered and died to give us a way out of the suffering both now and forever. Because of our sins, we hurt ourselves, we hurt others, and most of all, we hurt God. In our own power, we can't make things right, but through God's power and through the resurrection of Jesus, our sins can be forgiven and we can be redeemed. Without the resurrection, we're stuck in our sins, both now and forever. But because of the resurrection, is true. It goes into um, verse 54 and 57, when the perishable has been clothed with imperishables and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where? O oh, death is your victory. Where? O oh, death is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus' resurrection overcomes death and sin forever. Through Jesus, we can be resurrected right now. Just the resurrection gives us power through Jesus to live differently. Through Jesus, we can be resurrected forever. Despite the way that maybe our sins have separated us from God. Jesus' resurrection makes a way for us to be with God forever, for an eternity. Do you see how much this matters? The resurrection of Jesus is the key to everything. If Jesus was simply a good teacher, a miracle worker, or just a guy who suffered it, you know, died on the cross and stayed dead, then us following him would be completely pointless, right? But that's not what happened to Jesus. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for you and me. But then, three days later, after he was put to death, Jesus opened his eyes up and he stood up and he left the grave. This moment changed everything for you and me. Because of the resurrection, if you trust and follow Him, the Jesus who lives now will live in you. The fact that Jesus lives matters. Hugely. Because we desperately need the life that He offers to us. You see, without Jesus, our sins lead to death. And see, both in this life and the afterlife, our sins can lead to the death of our health, our relationships, our future success. See, everything sin destroys. Like when maybe uncontrolled anger transforms a safe house, right, into a battlefield. Lust tears apart our once healthy relationship. Lies destroy the truth that once existed with your friends. Pride turns 
and ruins your ability to learn, grow, and to reach your full potential God has in plan for you. And on top of all that, according to Paul, sin doesn't just destroy our lives now, but sin leads our spiritual death and destruction in eternity. And see, it does it by separating us from God. See, before Jesus, sin and death had been undefeated, right? Throughout all human history. But you know what? Then Jesus decided to pick a fight with sin. And guess who won? Jesus won. When Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered sin and death. See, that same Jesus wants to give you and me power to conquer sin and death too. We need Jesus' power to conquer sin and death. Why? Well, because for as long as we live, we'll continue to see sin lead to death. In our lives, in our world. You see, sin is constantly causing pain and destruction. When someone hurts us, it's easy for us to see how their sin has caused us pain. But it's not always easy to see how our own sin has caused pain. Can you name the last time your sin caused you pain? Can you name the last time your sin has caused someone else pain, either intentional or maybe it's unintentional? Can you name the last time your sin caused God pain? See, when we mess up, hurt somebody, make a bad decision, it's human nature to try to maybe just forget about the pain and just move on about it as quick as possible, right? We don't want to think about it. We want to forget about it and move on. But today, let's try to do something a little bit more different. As you think about the sin you've committed and the pain it has caused, don't make excuses. Instead of telling yourself or God that your actions weren't really that bad, own up to them. Don't shift the blame. Maybe someone else was shares a blame or a sin with you. But no, we're talking about you, not about anyone else. Don't hide. I know it's painful to admit you've messed up, fallen short, or even caused harm. But you can't find healing until you acknowledge that you're, that you're sick, that you have sinned. You see, we've all done things that we've cause pain, destruction, and death. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus came to defeat our sin and give us new life when we put our faith in Jesus. And we ask him to save us from the power of sin. He does it. But before we can experience the power of Jesus' forgiveness and our new life through him, We have to acknowledge how much we need it. And so if you've never asked Jesus to save you from the power of sin and death, let today be the day you let him give you a new life. You can reach out to me through a message. You can call me. I would love to talk to you, read some scripture and pray with you, and help you make that decision to let Jesus be your Lord and Savior, and start walking and following Him. If you've already accepted Jesus, His gift of new life, let this be a moment to reflect on the ways you still need Him to bring light and life into the areas of your life where there is still darkness. Sin is powerful, guys. But Jesus' power is way greater. Yes, sin leads 
to death and destruction. But let me tell you something. Death is not the end. You see, Jesus knew his death and resurrection could conquer death forever and ever. And even though it was painful, Jesus decided that you and I were worth it. You see, Easter Sunday is the day that we celebrate Jesus' victory over sin. Today. Sin brings death, but Jesus conquered death and sin along with it. I hope that you're more convinced that even now more than ever, that to Jesus, you are worth it. And that Jesus will always be worth it to you too. Hey guys, as you go throughout the day and you celebrate and you guys enjoy your family here this Easter Sunday, I hope you remember that to Jesus, you are worth it. And I hope that you know that Jesus is worth it to you too. Because guys, he did it all on that cross. We don't have to be scared of death. And we can spend eternity with him, our father, in heaven. Hey guys, have a great and wonderful Easter. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today on this Easter Sunday. Lord, we are so thankful for what you have done. We are so thankful for giving us your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, and that today he is the, the grave, the tomb <clears throat> is empty. The stone is rolled away and he is not there. Jesus lives. He is risen from the dead. He has conquered sin and death. And Lord, we are so thankful for the opportunity that you've given us, the choice that you have given us to accept you as our personal Savior so we can be forgiven of our sins and we can live with you in, for eternity in heaven. Lord, I pray you will just touch each and every one of those that are watching. Lord, be with everybody as we're going through this time. And Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.